Good morning and welcome back to the Upside of Downsizing. In the last video, we began framing the deck for our straw bale house. And today, we're going to finish it up. Let's get going. Okay, I've got all the floor joists in. We went pretty smooth. I've got just the right, it's level, but I have just a very, very slight pitch, very slight pitch away from the house. So any kind of water would drain off. And uh, the use of the jig to locate the floor joist hangers was incredibly consistent. The problem was it was incredibly consistently wrong. And that's my fault. Operator error, as always. When I made that jig that I showed you in the last video, I used a piece of 2 by 6 that I had laying around. I should have used it from the batch of four joists that I have that I'm using. Because every time you get a piece of lumber from a place like Home Depot or even a, 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 a lumber store, it's going to be slightly different. And as a result, all of my joists four joists are about between a quarter and an eighth of an inch proud standing above that rafter or the uh, the beam or the the rim joist whatever you want to call it so I can come back here with my electric planer and shave that down so that I don't have a step and I think that'll be probably the easiest way to fix it and of course it's not only on this side but it's on that side as well. That'll be a little more difficult to access, but you got to do what you got to do. So I still recommend that jig, but I recommend not doing as I did, but rather use uh, pieces of take, just take one of your floor joists, cut it, cut off a three or four inch piece and use that in your jig so that the placement of the floor joist hanger will be correct. Had it been correct, this would have been a breeze. I'd be done. And instead, I probably have an hour's worth of work left in front of me. In the last video, I kept using the word cedar. And what I really meant was redwood. This is two by six by 12 foot redwood pieces. And we're going to be using this as our decking material. The deck is all framed out. And before I put the deck boards on, what I want to do is I'm going to take the asphalt emulsion and I'm going to paint the top of all the floor joists and all of the blocking. And this is also pressure treated lumber. So really this uh, additional asphalt emulsion is just an extra layer of protection. So I'm gonna get this put on and then tomorrow we're gonna begin with the deck boards.
So I've got the coat of asphalt emulsion on the tops of the framing, and tomorrow I'll continue with the decking. This is the reason things have been delayed a little bit. We ended up buying red wood for our decking material. I bought about a hundred hours worth of deck screws, a good quality deck screw, and I was just going to face screw the deck boards down. And then I started looking around a little bit and realized that for just a couple bucks more, literally about $15 more, I could get what's in this box. Let me show it to you. As you can see, it just arrived yesterday evening, and I'm looking at it for the first time. Camo Edge Deck Screws. And the Camo Edge Deck Fastening System. Let me get it open. I've been looking at this on uh, YouTube quite a bit lately. It's been around for several years. And what it does is it uh, edge screws or edge fastens the deck boards. So you don't see any screws on the face of the deck when you're done. If I can get it out, this box is trolling me. I'm not sponsored by anybody. But again, as I always say, you want to send me stuff, send it over. There you go. A little cheat sheet. And now there are other systems available also. I, I know Craig, and I'm a fan of Craig. Craig makes a deck fastening system. The only problem with the Craig system is you have to pre-drill every hole. And with this tool, you don't. So with this tool... You squeeze the trigger here, lock it under your board. It'll leave a sixteenth of an inch gap between boards, which is exactly how much I wanted for our uh, our lumber. And then there's a place here and here to feed the screws in. You drop a screw in and screw it down. And what it's basically doing is a very precise toenail so that the boards are fastened and the screws are not totally visible. You can see them if you look for them, and you'll be able to remove a board after the fact if you ever need to do a repair. But it's not the glaring face screwing of deck boards. So let me see if I can open this up. These are interesting screws. For two for two by lumber, they recommend a two and three eighths inch screw, which is what this is. And I'm going to get in here and see if I can show it to you. I hope this will focus on it. So what this is, is a type of screw that will actually extract the sawdust as it's being drilled in. It's also good for composite material. The screws are a little more expensive than, uh, than regular traditional deck screws, but as you can see, they're also a very small head, so they're going to be very discreet. This whole, this whole package here costs $105, including the tool. And this should be enough for me to do my entire front deck. Let's see how it works out. Okay, I got the deck laid out. Here's how we're going to do it. We have one board running vertical, essentially dividing the deck into two sections. Each section can then be uh, covered with a 2 by 6 by 12 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these fly and then I'll snap a line and I'll cut it off at the end. And then what I'm going to do is use some two by eight and I, that I have sanded and stained and I'm going to put a picture frame around it, around the edge here, running vertical. So it'd be like a skirt, but it's going to come up vertical to the height of these boards here so that there'll be no end grain visible. Okay, I'm going to do my best to show you how this system works. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that will have a better, clearer explanation. and But I'm just going to show you. So what you do is you squeeze the handle here. And what this does is separates these two uh, prongs, if you will. And they're also the, 
There are also your gap measurement. So you just space it, place it right over the joist and release it. And then it holds tight. Take two screws and load it into the tool. And then using the provided T15, T15 star bit. And I'm putting some weight with my knee on this board. And I'm also using one of my clamps to make sure to aid with uh, holding the gap consistent because this board has a little bit of warpage. And again, you can't drive too far because you drive to the point uh, where you you can only go up to here, and that sets this these screw perfectly. So you always want to do the one that's away, going forcing the board, if you will, back toward the uh, previous boards, and then come back and do the other side. Release it. You can see where the holes are. That's from the previous board. That's from the current board I just did. And there's the hole right here. So good morning. It's the next day and I want to give you a glimpse at what I got done yesterday. It was really hot in the morning when I started and it was very slow going because there's a little bit of a learning curve with this camo edge fastening system. I really like it, but it does uh, take a little getting used to. There's just a different way of working. And even though I did hand pick all of the boards, there were st some boards that still needed some uh, persuasion using either uh, clamps or wedges. So this is what I got done. I'm hoping to be able to finish up today. As you can see, it's a little cloudy today. It's perfect working weather. So I'm going to try to get these last boards done at least. So back here, I did have a little bit of uh, trimming to do to go around the posts on the foundation. And then what I did was I just let these boards all fly and then cut it off here using my uh, my Craig AccuCut. So what I'm going to do is I'll finish up the boards. And then I have, as you can see, laying there in the distance, some 2x8s that are going to be used as fascia boards going all the way around. And it will sort of picture frame this in so that there are no exposed cut edges. So they say rain is starting in about an hour. I better get started. As you can see, I got interrupted by the rain. It's stopped now, and we're supposed to have three or four hours of dry weather, so I'm going to see if I can get this finished up. Of course, that's what I said before, too. I'm getting ready to cut the boards using the Craig AccuCut. You'll notice I cut the last three boards closest to the house foundation to the proper length. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been enough room for me to get in there with the circular saw. I got all the deck boards down, and I was in the process of getting the fascia boards put up around the perimeter when the rain hit. As you can see from our deck, it was a pretty good soaker all afternoon. Got quite a bit of water. But... The desert needs it, and the fires in Tucson and the fires north of Phoenix 
They all need this rain. Hopefully they got some as well. So the fascia boards will have to wait till tomorrow. And that should be the final step for this deck. We finished up the trim this morning. Got the fascia boards all done. We had a little bit of a hiccup. The 2x8x12s were not long enough to span the entire width. Two pieces to span the entire width with the overlap on the outside fascia board on both sides. So we ended up taking a piece of seat of a redwood and extending this down. And then that gave us the ability to put in 2x12s. Now it's done. Now that the deck boards are in and the fascia boards are all complete, this project is for all intents and purposes wrapped up. I am going to take some redwood planking and run it across here to close up this gap. We will also be building stairs once it's determined the exact location of our door. If you have any questions about what we've done on this video, please leave them in the comment box below. As always, we appreciate your support and we hope you had a great Independence Day weekend. We'll see you in the next video.